So first off, uh, before I start this, I just wanted to say that if you guys hear a fan blowing in the background or, you know, the background noise is uh, much more staticky than usual, that's why. There's a fan in the back. Um, as you know, I record things in my basement. This is my game room. And unfortunately, uh, because of lovely waterproofing from the people who had this house before us, uh, our, our friggin' hot water heater started... Uh, leaking and me and my dad had to fix it and unfortunately the you know leaking came onto the rug that's down here for some reason I don't know why there's a rug however um, yeah we got it fixed and now it's just trying to dry so it doesn't turn into black mold or something like that so if you hear that in the background that's why um, but without further ado we're talking about our next game today and that is Doom 2016 um, hard to say if this is a reboot or not, because I don't think I've heard any official explanation uh, about the continuity of Doom, which apparently it does have. Uh, so, I, I, again, I am completely clueless on the continuity of this game, because I've also never played another Doom game, and I know I'm going to get... Well, I'm sure I'm going to get some people saying, you should play this series, and I completely agree with you. Um, but... First-person shooters, if, if you've known me for a long time, haven't always been my forte. Uh, because, well, for one thing, when I was growing up, platformers were the thing. You know, at the end of the PS2 era, third-person and first-person shooters were just starting to take hold um, and have, like, a mainstream uh, effect on the market. So, you know, when I was playing games back then, I didn't grow up with Halo. I grew up with a PlayStation 2, so I had, you know... Jack and Daxter, I had Ratchet and Clank, I had Sly Cooper, um, of course I had the Sonic games, and I grew up with a Game Boy Advance to play the Mario games. But, I guess the point is, is that I didn't have a PC back then, I didn't know anything about PC gaming, so I didn't play a lot of the greats back then. Um, and I never played first person shooters really, until like the Call of Duty games started coming, becoming more popular, and to me, I hate Call of Duty. I think it's the most garbage series ever. Um, not because the games themselves are necessarily garbage. It's just something very sickening to me about a company releasing a game over and over every single year. It's the same thing with Assassin's Creed, in my opinion, believe me. Um, so I, I don't pick any of the Call of Duties up. I picked up two in my lifetime. I only own two Call of Duty games. I own Advanced Warfare on the PS4. Because uh, I just wanted to try it because there were no games on the PS4 at the time, and it completely went against what I thought about um, at the time of buying third-party games only on my PC, not on the PS4. But, you know, there was that. And then there is Call of Duty Black Ops 3, which I have in my Steam library, and I barely touched it. Um, I bought it one day because my friend wanted to play some co-op, and they added Steam support, Steam mod support to it. So he was really excited about that, and I decided I'd pick it up too. Uh, so, when I'm talking about first-person shooters, the time I really started getting into them, and I say getting into them, it's, it was a very soft opening to them, and I'm, I'm still not you know, the biggest first-person shooter fan, but I consider myself a lot bigger of a fan than I was back then. But when I really started playing first-person shooters was with Half-Life 2. I remember I had gotten a laptop for Christmas, and my parents um, had given me some money uh, to buy some games on Steam, because there were a ton of Steam sales, and I remember that was the first time I got really introduced to PC, um, through Steam sales, and I bought a bunch of games. I bought one of the Batman games, which barely ran on that computer. It wasn't a gaming PC. Of course, I had Portal 2 on my... Uh, PS3, so I was able to download the code uh, with that account and play Portal 2. Again, it barely ran. The PC was not... It was a powerful PC. Even today, it still holds its own. Uh, but it, it doesn't play games. It just it can't do it very well. Um, but one of the games I picked up was Half-Life 2. And, of course, that game didn't run very well either. Um, but I dealt with it because I had heard great things about it. And, of course, I played through it. I enjoyed every second of that game, and at that point, at that time, I deemed that game the best first-person shooter I had ever played. And my friends, of course, at the time, 
not knowing anything about PC either, they didn't believe me. And I'm pretty sure a bunch of my friends still haven't played the Half-Life games. Uh, I'm not going to bother telling you guys about the Half-Life series. You know what it is. They're some of the best first-person shooters ever created, though, in my opinion. And I even replayed Half-Life 2 recently, and playing that game again is like... It's like one of those gaming feelings to me, where when I played it, it was like putting on a glove that just fit. And every time, no matter how long, or how much I grow, or how much I change as a person, I could put on this glove and it always fits, and it's always comfortable. And that's exactly what Half-Life 2 is to me. Uh, Half-Life 2 is not a realistic first-person shooter with physics and things like that, like interesting, not physics, um, with like, you know, AAA budget cutscenes or anything like that. It's a game just purely, in, in the purest sense, it's a game. It, it has a story to it, it has a few sections where you're listening to dialogue, but it keeps it to a minimum, and it is mostly focused on the shooting, the puzzles, and whatever else they decide to throw at you. And that's the incredible thing about Half-Life 2, is that it just, it feels so good to play. It feels so right. Every weapon in the game has its place in the game. You don't feel like you're ever misusing things, or you're not using something enough, or that something doesn't even need to be in the game. It feels like it's supposed to be there. So, you might wonder why I'm praising Half-Life 2 so much. But that's because I wanted to give you guys a little bit more perspective into what I find fun in a first-person shooter. You know, a story's great and everything, but the game, in my opinion, has to feel fun to play at first. Um, the reason a lot of people like Mario as a platformer is because they all feel really good to play. Just the Mario 3D games alone. I think we can all agree that even though, you know, Mario Sunshine isn't the most popular game, it's definitely not my favorite of the series, I can still say it feels amazing to play. Uh, it has so many, it just has such a tight control scheme, and Mario flows so well through movements. Uh, the flood mechanic works really well. Um, and, I, you know, that's just a platformer perspective, like, that's what Half-Life is to me in terms of, you know, if it's it's the... It's the Mario of its genre to me. And so it feels so great to play. And the funny thing is, there's so many games like Half-Life back in the day that uh, really did that, and one of those was Doom. Uh, so the reason I play, I play, or the, the reason I talk about Half-Life in this sense is because I want to give you an idea of what I find fun in a first-person shooter and what I expect. And... The reason I say this is because I want to give you a perspective in how much I love Doom 2016. Doom 2016 is not only one of the best first-person shooters I've ever played, it's probably one of the best games I have ever played in my life. Um, now, again, whether you believe this to be a tall order or not, I have many favorite games. I can't just bring it down to one or two. There's a bunch. Um, but those games are something I can go back to at any time, and I love, and I not only have nostalgia for, but they're just fun games to play, and Doom 2016 scratches all those itches for me. It's one of those games I'm going to come back and play over and over and over again, and even going back and recording footage for this game was a very uh, interesting experience, because... By the time I was done recording, I hadn't even realized three hours had passed. That's how much I love this game. Um, even to give you a better idea of the game, uh, looking at it now, my Steam time says I played 39 hours as of this recording, and that was only me playing through each difficulty individually on the single player. I'd never touched the multiplayer. I booted up a map on Snap Map one or, once or twice. These are all the extra features of the game. Uh, but no, I played it straight for the single player, over and over and over again. So that should give you an idea of how highly I like this game. Uh, and I, I think it's for a lot of reasons why I think that. Uh, I'm not going to go over like my first impressions of the game when it was first announced or anything, because quite frankly, I really didn't know it was coming out. Um, but Doom 2016 is something I feel like a lot of first-person shooters need to start taking notes from again. Uh, this game 
is like the Half-Life 2 of today, in my opinion. Uh, but enough praise. Let's talk about the game itself. Um, the story of this game is a little bit wonky, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, you can follow it. It definitely is there. Uh, you have to read, like, passages and stuff like that. But me, personally, I'm really not into that. I'm not that Dark Souls guy who goes looking for story and lore and things like that. But there definitely is something there. Um, to my understanding, the, the story is that back in the day, like, when aliens first discovered Mars, they found the gates to hell, and eventually they, they told people not to go there because it was dangerous. Uh, eventually, the human race goes to Mars with the UAC, a company, um, and they create the UAC base on Mars, find the gate to hell, can't read, apparently I think that's what it is, they can't read the you know, alien scripture telling them not to open the gates of hell, they do, as you could tell, all hell breaks loose. And the game doesn't really tell you that much to begin with, it kind of shows it through its visual design, which is another thing I like, there's no actual, like, in-game cutscenes in this game, it's all just you doing something, you play as a silent protagonist, and um, you're seeing everything through his point of view, most of the time you have full control when cutscenes are going on, and you're just watching something unfold. So, we start at the Doom guy, which is his name, um, in a chair of some sort coming out of a rune, um, or a coffin of some sort, and there are uh, demons lurking about, and of course, there's different kinds in this game. Uh, the weakest demons are just cannon fodder for you to get extra health or something like that, and you start off with a pistol. And slowly, as this beginning section goes on, you find out more and more about the base you're in. Um, you get a shotgun, and then you start uh, fighting, I think they're called wraiths, and they throw these little projectiles at you. So you get your shotgun, and you fight them off, and you learn some of the mechanics of the game. And the thing I really like about this is also how much it takes from old Doom games. Um, instead of being played with a big story, and here's chapter one, here's chapter two, it goes in levels. So each time you're playing the game, you're going through a level, and there's uh, they're they're pretty linear for the most part. But you know, I'll get to that when I get to that. Uh, and eventually, you find out that there's this computer system named uh, Vega and a doctor named Dr. Samuel Hayden, which I guess he's some kind of cyborg or something. I never really read up on that. And they're trying to stop this lady. I forget her name. Um, from opening the gates of hell, and apparently she's made a contract with the demons, and that's why they're running rampant. So that's baseline the story in this game. Um, despite the kind of semi-serious story in this game, the nature of it, I feel like it tells itself really well for the most part. Again, the one thing I really like about it is that you have full control over your character in most cutscenes. Um, if not, it's just a quick camera zoom in on something. Um, but my favorite character in this game has to be the Doom guy. He has the best personality of all of them. Um, only because he's, he just, just does the funniest things. Uh, there's this part where this level where you're trying to take out these little nodes in a in a computer system, and I think they have energy or something like that. And there's three of them, and Samuel Hayden tells you to, to take them out. Well, he says, be cautious with them, take them out slowly, and then just put them down. And what does Doom Guy do? He shoves it out and just starts kicking it in and destroys it. And of course Samuel Hayden gets angry. Or his idea of Samuel Hayden getting in contact with him with this little floating tablet thing is to punch it. Uh, you know, that's it's it's funny to me because the Doom Guy is so full of vigor and rage and but he just does the funniest things with it. It's like, you'd think the hero or the protagonist of a game would be, you know, calm and collected during this whole thing, but Doom Guy just wants to mess things up. He wants to screw over everyone and mess up their day. Um, so that that's probably my favorite part about this game in terms of its storytelling. It's just how funny Doom Guy is when he, um, you know, is him. That's about all there is to it. Uh, but... The big meat and potatoes for me of this game was its gameplay, and it feels 
phenomenal to play. Um, I go back to Half-Life in this sense. The problem I have with a lot of first-person shooters is that they try to be so grounded in reality that they try to make your aiming really, uh, you know, realistic and your movement feel really realistic, almost to a clunky sense. And, of course, you can get used to it, but, eh, you know, to me, it just doesn't feel good to play. Doom and Half-Life, on the other hand, feel amazing to play. Of course, you know, a lot of first-person shooters back in the day felt like this, like I said. Uh, your character would move super fast, your aiming could be super precise and on point, everything felt tight and, you know, really, really well managed in terms of the control system. And Doom feels exactly like this. Um, my favorite part about the game is actually the fact that I was able to play it on my PC, which, if you're getting this game, I'd assume you're going to get it on PC. Uh, I haven't played it with a controller yet, and I will be playing with the controller when I get the Switch version. I'll be supporting that game. Uh, maybe I'll make a thoughts video on it when I get the chance. But I couldn't imagine playing this game with a controller. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, you're just on the PC. You're going to be pretentious about it. No. You know, not only... Okay, I'll, I'll pull out the PC pretension for a second. If you're playing games on a PC and once you get used to mouse and keyboard, it's almost impossible to go back to controller. I'm one of those rare types that can, for most games, do that. Uh, Borderlands 2 was one of them with the Vita, and playing that at 30 frames a second was quite an interesting thing. But uh, playing it with the two analog sticks, it felt fine, as long as the game is usually you know, good with transferring the mouse and keyboard over to a controller, I'm fine. I, I really don't have any problems. Uh, but I couldn't imagine playing this uh, with a controller. I'd ha probably have to play it on Easy Moon. And the only reason I say that is because the game requires such precision and such, you know, movement in a way that only the mouse and keyboard can accommodate. There were times when I have two enemies coming at me from front and back. And, of course, they're, they're charging at me. And the only way I could defeat them is by flicking my mouse to behind me, shooting one, and then flicking it back and shooting the other. There were just times like that where I just needed that kind of precision, and a controller just will not give that to you. Uh, but in terms of controls, the mouse and keyboard feels sublime. Um, I'm not really going to go in too much into the keybinds, because you can just change that if you don't like it. But I, I, you know, everything down to the way this game controls feels really well, or how even you switch your weapons. Um, on the default, you hold down the Q key, and with the Q key, it just, if you hold it down, it brings up a, a list of your weapons, but just tapping it switches to your last one. Of course, you can use the mouse scroll wheel to do it. Um, F does your melee attack, so it's really easy to get to. And, and the funniest thing I find about the controls in this game is that what I find doing in most first-person shooters, maybe with the exception of Half-Life and Doom, uh, is that I'm always holding down that shift key so I can run because, you know, that gets you to places faster, it makes you feel like you're actually progressing easier, and it's something I almost kind of subconsciously think of whenever I play a game. So, when I played Doom, my first subconscious thing was to hit that shift key to run. In Half-Life, it just gives you a boost and makes you go even faster. In Doom, the shift key makes you go slow, which I, I just I found that kind of funny. Um, you know, the same thing with uh, reloading. There is no reloading in this game. It just, you put out um, all your ammo, you can shoot it how fast as you want, and there's no reloading, there's no clip system, and pressing R actually uh, cycles between power-ups for your weapons if you have both of them. So... It's just something funny I, I find about this game because it's so different in terms of how it controls. Um, like I said, it's almost like the Doom guy himself. You'd think the protagonist would do something different than what the Doom guy does, but the Doom guy always does the opposite. He's full of rage, he's, you know, visceral. And I, I felt like they kind of took the same approach with the controls for this game. Um, you know, Doom guy already runs super fast, feels amazing to, to scoot around with. Uh, his control scheme. So when I hit the shift key to make him go slow, it's actually like, well, you're already going this fast. It's, you know, the shift key is going to slow you down. Um, just something funny I found. Uh, and all the weapons in this game feel phenomenal. 
Uh, when I was playing this game, you know, of course you start off with a pistol, and really you're not going to use that too much in the game. It's just one of those infinite ammo things that you use as a last-ditch last effort. Or if you're in a room full of, like, the really weak uh, zombified aliens, and you don't want to waste ammo, you are just use that. Um, so, you know, it's whatever. But... There's a whole range of weapons in this game. There's like a shotgun, of course, there is the assault rifle, um, there's the BFG, the big fucking gun, as a lot of people like to call it. Uh, there's this one that shoots out these little, like, spheres, and I guess there's some kind of laser system. Uh, there's a Gatling gun you can get. A whole bunch of weapons. There's actually two shotguns you can get. You can get a, a new and improved shotgun, which you get, that's the second weapon you get. And then the other shotgun you get is an old um, double barrel shotgun that takes a while to reload. Uh, so, you know, what you see is what you get with this game. You get all these weapons just like in Half-Life. Um, but the one thing that makes this game really interesting are these little runes you can find. Um, you have to go through these little rune trials or these little mini games you play almost. Um, one of them might be to kill this many, you know, wraiths in this certain amount of time. One of them was to shoot barrels. One was to do, I think, uh, a visceral attack. Um, so, you know, you, you get them, you can actually unlock more rune slots. It's interesting how this game works because it, it really rewards you for exploration. Um, you know, getting different uh, power-ups really requires you to fill out these things. But back to the runes. The runes will allow, like, certain power-ups to happen. Um, one of them was you, your shotgun doesn't take any time to reload anymore. Uh, things like that. So, and, th and I think that's what really keeps this game to be replayable, is that there's so many different ways to play it. Um, because there's also little machines that you can find to upgrade your weapons, and that each up upgrade, or each weapon has two upgrades you can get. Um, and you just pick one to cycle through each time. So, for instance, the shotgun, the very first shotgun you get, has a burst fire mode. Uh, that's one of them. And you use it by holding down the right click. There's also no aim down sights in this game, which I also like a lot. Uh, but yeah, you hold it down, and you use the burst fire mode. Every single gun is like that. You hold down the uh, right click. But the second one, which is my favorite one, is a little bomb shot. It shoots a little, you know, grenade at the enemies. Um, and each one takes a little time to recharge. Uh, my favorite one in this game, bar none, is probably the assault rifle. Um, which, it's double-edged sword because the assault rifle, it's two power-ups. One of them is good, and one of them I just find completely useless. Uh, the first one is the uh, an aim-down sights mode for the assault rifle. I, Again, I don't find it very good. Um, but then there's a missile, <laughs> a missile launcher, and you, it just brings up this little tube on top of your assault rifle and you start shooting missiles at enemies. Um, again, you can get that powered up so that when you run out of missiles in your little tank, it just auto-refills, auto-refills, auto-refills. It's definitely one of those ones I'd recommend to get. And when I'm playing this game, I always usually go after different weapon types that I haven't used before. I usually only stick it to one upgrade. If you end up getting two, you can just press the R button to cycle between them. Um, but, you know, I'm always trying to improve in this game and always trying to get new weapon upgrades and see what I can do different when I'm playing it. Um, and, and with all that said, it, it wouldn't be anything. The weapon choice, the weapon selection wouldn't mean anything if the level design wasn't designed well and the enemies weren't designed well. And I'm, I'm happy to say both of them are phenomenal. Uh, there's so much variation in the level design, actually. Uh, you know, the beginning of the game has you going through the Mars base, and then there's parts of it that where you're in hell. Um, and each one does, uh, is really different because on Mars, you might be on the outskirts of Mars, not in the facility itself, or climbing out an outside portion of the facility and looking out into the distance, or you might be in part of the facility, or, you know, like a different, you know, section of the facility, and the scenery always changes, like, is, I guess what I'm saying. Um, hell itself is probably the most visually interesting place, just because it gives a different color scheme to an extent. So, there's that. Um, the end. The the levels are also really 
well um, designed, in my opinion. Uh, the reason I say this is because, like I said, they're linear to a point, but they're also open to exploration. So when you're playing through the game, you'll see different doors locked or something like that, and there's secrets to find in each door. Um, there's little crevices in between each, you know, section of the level. And then there's some levels that are just one big level that you have to explore to get certain items for to progress the game. And in between all of that, like I said, there's crevices, doors, things like that, um, and secrets to find, and most of them, you know, give you good power-ups and etc, etc. And the enemy design is very similar to how the old Doom was designed, I noticed. Um, you know, there's different types of enemies. Slowly, as they get introduced to, they start becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. There's these big brute enemies that you have to fight. Um, there's the wraiths, as I said. There's these little sniper rifle aliens that you can fight. Uh, there's those little meatball-looking uh, aliens. I don't even know what any of these are called, because uh, I never really got into that, but... You know, they they are so visually interesting, and they differentiate themselves really well. And they all have different attacks. Um, you know, a lot of them you have to compensate with your weapon and with your choice of, you know, movement. Um, you can't move in a place with a bunch of bottomless pits with, the, with those brutes, because they'll just knock you off. Um, or they'll do a lot of damage to you if you're low on health. So things like that really make the level design and the enemy design really clash together. Um, and there's, like I said, there's a bunch of enemies to fight. You'll never run out of combinations in level design for you to fight. Uh, which brings me to my next point. There's a visceral attack system in this game. I think that's what it's called, or a melee takedown system. And it's probably one of my favorite additions to this game. Um, whenever you're fighting an enemy, and they're so weakened that they can't really move anymore, they'll kind of stagger and they'll start changing colors. Um, that means you can go in and finish them off with a melee attack. You hit the F key, and depending on which side you hit them from, depends on the melee kill. So if I hit one of the characters, one of the enemies from up top, I can just rip his head open. But if I hit him from the bottom, and I'm like kind of under him, and I hit him, and I, you know, my camera's pointed at the legs when I'm about to take him down, he'll swipe under his feet, he'll fall down, and then he'll just, like, nail him in the head or something. Probably my favorite part of the game, honestly. And the reason you want to do these final attacks is that, you know, as you go on, you can get upgrades for even your uh, physical attack. But, you know, as you go on in the game it becomes like almost necessary to do this because they'll give you either ammo or health or shields something along those lines um, so again this is probably one of my favorite things because it, it, it makes the the fights feel progress progressive in a way um, when I'm fighting a gigantic brute or three brutes as it were and I take one of them down it feels like yes I took that guy down two more to go and once you finish the fight and you have you know, like I said, three or four different um, attack animations play out. It, it makes the game feel so varied and fun. Uh, when I'm playing this game, I can't get over just how fun it was to take down Brutes. So, again, my favorite part of this game is that. Um, and yeah, so... And, and there are a few boss fights in this game, too, and they're really fun. Um, they're few and far between. There's probably only about three or four, I have to say. And, like I said, they're a lot of fun. They're very varied. Um, so, a lot... But a lot of this game is, like, I say in every game review, is uh, experiencing it. And I, I don't want to spoil too many of the bosses, because there's there's not that many as a whole. But by the final, you know, boss in this game, it feels very climactic, and it, it is just a joy to experience. Um, so, as I mentioned, the... The story in this game didn't really interest me that much. What really got me invested was the gameplay, the level designs, um, you know, the enemies. And one of the biggest points of enjoyment of, in this game, and if it was taken out or changed, I just, I don't think I would like this game that much. Um, or at least, you know, I would like it less than I do now, is the soundtrack. Uh, it has the Metal Gear Rising, you know, style of soundtrack, where it's a lot of heavy metal playing in the background, and it slowly picks up as you're going through the game. Um, 
the person who directed the soundtrack was a, a man named Mick Gordon, and I don't know much about him, but my guy, you did a fantastic job with this soundtrack. Uh, one of the best soundtracks I've heard, um, heavy metal wise in a video game, which isn't saying that much, I suppose, but when I'm playing this game, um, I think the important part of games is that it's good to have music, but not all the time. Um, one of my favorite points of Breath of the Wild was that there was battle music, but in between, you know, exploration and things like that, there might be a few ambient tracks playing in the background, but for the most part, they leave you to your, you know, to yourself, and there's a lot of quiet time, and, you know, playing this game, you, there's quiet time in between bosses, and then the music picks up as soon as you start fighting. Um, incredible soundtrack, you guys should go listen to it. Uh, even down to the, the Doom theme song is great. Um, and then the final piece of immersion that really got me into this game was its graphics and its engine. The reason I mention the engine is because I, I think a lot of developers should start taking this into consideration when they make their games. Um, Doom 2016 was made with the id tech engine. Uh, I think it was id tech 4, maybe? Uh, not quite sure. But the game targets a constant 60 frames a second, and apparently on consoles it does that really, really well. Of course, the Switch version will be locked at 30, but again, I think that's a good sacrifice to make to be able to play the game portably. So, the reason I think this is so impressive is that I'm a frame rate guy. Um, whenever a game comes out and, you know, I see the graphics, of course I can look at Uncharted 4. I played through it, and I love the graphics. It looks great. But, would I have cared if a lot of those effects of the game were taken out? Even the resolution being dropped to play that game at 60 frames a second? Absolutely. I would have taken it any day of the week. You know, the best graphics in the world. Um, the reason I find Doom 2016 to be so impressive is that it still is a fantastic looking game. Uh, you know, the level of detail is uh, really well done. It's a really well optimized game. You can play it on really weaker PCs, uh, but it looks fantastic. So, when I'm playing this game and I see the graphics and I'm playing at 60 frames a second in my monitor's case, my monitor can support up to 165 frames a second. And I'm playing it and I'm enjoying myself as much as I am. It just, it gives me such a good feel of what the game is. And, and I have so much more fun because of it. Um, there aren't many games like Doom that do this. And, and I think a lot of the priorities but with 60 frames a second, the way that the control scheme is, the way the music plays, the way the level designs are, it's made for a person like me. Uh, it's very easy to get into, it's very accessible, but there's a challenge and a skill ceiling that you'll never quite hit. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of difficulty modes, there's a ton of rune trials, there's a ton of power-ups. This game has it all, in my opinion. Um, and I think that we need more first-person shooters like this. Um, and Bethesda feels, to me at least, I haven't played all the first-person shooters out there right now, but Bethesda feels like they're doing the best with this. Because um, right after this game, I played Wolfenstein The New Order, and that game is fantastic. You guys should go play it. Uh, you know, the fact that I was excited for Wolfenstein 2, I was excited for a first-person shooter. How often does that happen to me? Not often. So, what my conclusion is about this game is that if you're not a first-person shooter fan, or you're looking into getting into them, or if you're even a veteran of first-person shooters, I recommend picking this game up. I recommend it to everyone. Um, it's just got such a gamey, arcadey feel that a lot of first-person shooters these days just can't nail. Um, again, the fact that I spent 40 hours in this game just playing the single player is very telling. Um, so... I'm looking forward to the Switch version of this game. I think it's going to be an interesting um, little venture for Nintendo. And I will be picking it up. Not only because I want to support, uh, you know, Doom as a development, you know, the, the studio that made Doom. Uh, I want to support Nintendo and their third party support. Uh, but I, you know, if you guys want, I'll, I'll take a look at the game, I'll give you my impressions of it. 
Um, I have a feeling it's going to come down to the same thing I said about Borderlands. It doesn't run as well as the other versions, and, you know, the graphics don't look as good. You know, it's harder to control with a controller, but it's Doom on a handheld. And I think that's going to be the big selling point. And, like I said, uh, Doom 2016. Fantastic game. Um, the last thing I should probably mention before I go is, again, there is two extra features in this game. There's a multiplayer mode, which I haven't actually touched. I uh, hear it's okay. And then there's a, a snap map, something, a mode called snap map, which is basically like the Smash Brothers um, stage creation kit, where, you know, or Gary's mod, I guess, would be the more apt description, where players can create their own levels and maps. Um, to be played in multiplayer, I think. You can play them in multiplayer or single player. They, they did a lot of stuff with it. The snap map is really cool. Um, the fact that you get so much control over what you can do is really interesting. Um, but, again, I haven't really touched them, so I'm not really going to talk about them too much. Multiplayer games aren't huge, in my opinion. I, I'm, not, I'm not huge into them. Um, you know, if I, if I can play a co-op game, I'm fine with it, but most multiplayer games, with maybe the exception of, like, Smash Brothers and Overwatch. It's about all I can take for that. But, yeah, that was Doom 2016. I really hope you guys can check this game out if you haven't already. Um, I have to get into the other Doom games to start, you know, really getting into this series, but I think this is a fantastic way to start if you haven't already. But, yeah, that's about all I gotta say, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Take it easy.